it's got to be a very, you know, uh, detail or you need like a SWAT team of accountants just to keep track of that. Well, that's correct. So uh, let's say a typical regular season NBA schedule is 82 games and they'll play 41 of those games at home. Right. So he's taxed on the 41 games at whatever the state rate is. So if he played for the Houston Rockets or the Dallas Mavericks or the San Antonio Spurs, he, he would pay no income tax because Texas doesn't have income tax. But if he plays in California or New York or Pennsylvania, then he'll pay the appropriate state income tax on those games. And then they obviously work out, you know, where he plays his road games and, and tax him accordingly. So you're right. It's, it's, a, it's a complex situation tax-wise. Yeah. But, you know, this is what happens with these greedy governments. You know, they got to get their, their hand in the coffers and, uh, and pay for all the, the, uh, the dole outs that they give. So, um, so, so I, and I assume it's not just basketball, LeBron's right? every moment. I assume it's not just basketball. You know, baseball players as well, you know, uh, you, you sort that out in the town that you're in. That's correct. That's Incredible. correct. So Major League Baseball, uh, the National Football League, uh, you know, all all sports. And uh, and so that's been some of the uh, challenges, you know, the NFL uh, wanting to potentially put a team in London. Uh, you know, how do you uh, uh, deal with a salary cap situation and then, you know, currency exchange differences and, wow. and things like that. So uh, there's a lot going on uh, in, in the sports world. Um, still a lot going on in the tax world. If you'll indulge in what's happening in my um, state of New Jersey, uh, where the governor has just imposed a millionaire's tax, at least those five million and over, and a tax on corporations that will soon be hiked from nine percent now to eleven and a half percent. The idea is to raise a lot of money to increase spending by about four and a half percent. But I don't see any effort to control government spending. I see a lot. Uh, more of an effort to raise revenue for that spending and more spending at that. What do you make of it? Well, you're right. I, I love it. Uh, living in Texas, uh, yeah. we're open for business. We, we welcome everybody. We'd love to have uh, Cavuto Coast to Coast uh, broadcast live from North Texas. That would be my dream situation. I am but, looking uh, at my options. But I think you're right. But, but, you know, I'm wondering, though, it, it, this flies in the face of what you would think would be common business sense, let alone what's going on on the millionaire side, but what's going on on corporations who have been leaving the state in droves. I cannot imagine this is going to bolster their argument to stay. Well, it's not. And you've seen that. Texas has, uh, has really reaped the benefits of, of the very uh, liberal uh, social uh, tax policies of California and Illinois and, and New York. Now, some people that are making $5 million a year, let's face it, you know, they're going to be able to pay their taxes and still maintain a high standard of living in New Jersey or New York. But you're right. I mean, the more that these state governments continue to tax uh, individuals or corporations. Neil, there's a tax right now, apparently in California, that they're considering. It's an asset tax. Um, so if you had a, let's say you had a second home in California and, you know, Palm Springs or Santa Barbara or wherever, they would tax you based on the total value of your assets, which would include that, that house. So people that maybe live in Texas or Florida, but also have a second residence in California, I think you're going to see um, retired people living on a more uh, fixed income, even if they're wealthy, they're going to start selling those assets and, and getting out of there. Because who wants to you know, be a sitting duck for a government to come in and just tax you on everything you own? It's, uh, it's, well, well, to it's your point, government it, it, It's not control. a left or right thing. I just find that they're far more creative coming up with ways to raise money than to rein in money. In other words, coming up with ways to get more revenues than even fathoming a couple of ideas how to you know, slow those revenues. I, it, it, it just never ceases to amaze me, but, but it keeps happening. Well, that's that's why uh, we have uh, politicians that are that are amateurs and not professionals like you. They're not uh, business people that think about that. You know, they they uh, instead of creating transactions and and creating commerce, they just think the best way to do it is to tax and to take away from those who who drive revenue and 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 then reapportion it to uh, their constituents. And it's it's a 
it's a it's a zero sum solution. But uh, hey, uh, at some point, I, I got to get you out to a sports event. You know, the Major League Baseball All Star Game is broadcast on Fox on your network in two weeks in D.C. Any chance uh, I can get you and and Gasparino down to the All Star Game? You don't want us together at any All Star Game unless you have a very large food bill. Um, but we'll talk about that. Um, no, John, very good having you again. Be well. Thank you, Neil. It is amazing. Um, but again, to John's point here, uh, we're so incredible the way we go about this. Always these governments, and it's not only in, in, in states like Connecticut and New Jersey and Illinois um, that have always come up with these ideas how to, how to have surtaxes. They never get the money they estimate. And they always are amazed afterwards how they never did. Because money is mobile. It moves.